Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we can get 400 likes on this video, that would be bloody magnificent. Uh, enjoy some highlights of the games that we've played so far this month. Um, it's actually going to be the uh, Doncaster game, not the Peterborough one. Good going to be doing in the live com because the Peterborough one was postponed uh, for a little while longer. So we'll be doing Doncaster away today, which could be quite difficult. So I will see you guys in a sec. Enjoy some highlights. Stevens back to Rossini, a ball across the box, and it somehow ended up in our own net, I think, or maybe it was off a of Luco. No, it is. Wimbledon nil, Brighton one, ball whips in, and a Luco scores. So to the byline, whips it across, and Hemed is in there again, and we haven't been able to stop those crosses today. That's been their big, big problem. Long range strike, and it's gone in off of Shea. Really big shame, actually. Um, not really sure how that's Malumbi's goal, but it went in because it went in off the goalkeeper. But there you go, 3 0 to Brighton. There we go, Wimbledon 0, Brighton 3. We, they were just the better side. We did manage to find a way to shut them down in the second half, but they still managed to grab a third goal and we just couldn't take our chances. Taylor steps up, scores the penalty. It is Wimbledon 1, Birmingham 0. One of the best sides in this division are behind to us. Great start. It's round his man. Can he get across the in though? He does. Taylor's in there and it is 2 0 to Wimbledon. Lyle Taylor with both the goals and we've really flipped this on Birmingham again. Brought that down brilliantly. Through for Loveridge. Loveridge is on side and it is 3 0 to Wimbledon. James Loveridge makes it 3 0 and we're going top of the league amazingly. Can he get across it? Does. All the way through. Taylor puts it in and it is 4 0. Taylor with the hat trick. What a performance against a brilliant Birmingham team. Goes around another man. He's into space here, Taylor. He's gone all the way through and made it five. Lyle Taylor has scored four goals in one game. What a performance from him. Fine. For Reeves, Taylor's probably making another great run here. He's slipping into space. Through for Loveridge. Loveridge has made it six. Wimbledon six. Birmingham nil. Loveridge with a pair. Taylor with four. I think he's got two assists as well. Ah, oh, across the near post is Denny Johnson, and it is Wimbledon 6, Birmingham 1, but who gives a damn? There we go, guys. Wimbledon 6, Birmingham City 1. What an incredible game. Donald with the corner, and it's been squeezed over the line, and it's another goal conceded from a corner. Two of our three goals conceded this year have come from corners already. Gotta say, guys, it's 1-0 to Oxford. I think we probably should have done better on the night. We shut down with them for the most part, but unfortunately lost to the corner. Could go short for Elliot. Can he find a ball? Pulls it back for Barcham. All the way for Frankham. That is lovely football from Wimbledon. It is Wimbledon 1, Swindon Town 0, George Frankham. And that would send us back up to third, amazingly. Great goal from Frankham. Great goal from Wimbledon. He can roll. So it's the through for Loveridge. He can shoot. And he has shot and he scored. Wimbledon 2, Swindon 0, James Loveridge with the goal. And that's his 20th goal for the club. Brilliant stuff. Hilton. Lovely long range strike. It's gone straight in from Hilton. Well, I don't know what we could really do about that. Jermaine Hilton smashed one in from 35 yards or whatever. Great goal from Swindon. Hilton will get it. There's a lot of players bombing forward for Swindon now. We have to be careful. Oh, good grief. We're about to get countered. A Josie. He's gone a bit wide there. He might even shoot. Reed with the strike and it is two all. That's a shame. We've done really well today to get two up and now we've thrown it all away. Disappointing. There we go. Wimbledon two, Swindon Town two. Not the best result in the world considering we were two goals up. Ambrose whips it all the way to the back post, right in there, and it's a goal. That was a very simple goal for Colchester. 1-0 Colchester United. Disappointing because we've done okay today. Ella Kobe's header, and it's ended up in the back of the net anyway. Off of Ella Kobe. I think it's another cross. Ball across the box, and Wright's put it in again. We are so vulnerable from crosses. That's the problem for us right now, I think. Crosses. Colchester 3, Wimbledon 0. But Taylor can sip it through. Loveridge is in there, and he scored one. He's got one back for us, at least. Colchester 3, Wimbledon 1. James Loveridge with the goal. So it's a simple goal for Schmodix, and it is 4-1 to Colchester, which feels a little bit harsh on us, but there we go. We've not been good enough on the night at taking our chances. Eves. Slips it through for Lyle Taylor. He's onside, and he scored another one. It is Colchester 4, Wimbledon 2. Lyle Taylor gets us back in the game. All right, guys, we're back. So as you can see, we're currently sitting 13th in the league, but it is keen to note that we do have a game in hand, the home match against Peterborough. So we're actually doing okay. Two points above the relegation zone, but with a game in hand, we're only a point, uh, a win away from the playoff spots in this league. It's been a bit of a strange one this month. Uh, I've been using a lot of pro zone stuff, and the, the key example of that was in the Birmingham game, where I changed a couple of things and I completely shut down their entire passing Basically, they couldn't do anything, and hence why we were able to just score at will. Lyle Taylor got a 10 in that game because he scored four times and assisted on both of Loveridge's goals. Outrageous performance from him. Brilliant stuff. As you can see, we've got two of the top scorers in the Division 2, which is great. So we're going to do a question of the day, and today's question of the day is this. Um, what are the plans for the Wimbledon save in terms of achievement? Uh, when will it finish, and is it just going to be a... a sort of a, a year-long save? The answer is no. It will be... Um, I'm just going to show you some stats while we talk about that. Uh, no, it will basically be... Um, until we win the Champions League. That's when the save will finish, like it was with Portsmouth, and like it is generally with all my saves, unless, of course, they're cut short by getting sacked or the game finishing, so to speak, or corruption. But that, that hasn't happened to me yet, touch wood. 
So yeah, basically that's going to be um, when it ends. Basically, it won't be a you know once we've won the Champions League, the save will finish. So um, we can go on to something else. Basically, that's the plan anyway. That way, I get to do two or three different saves, uh, and we get to ho hopefully have a long set of enjoyment out of it. That's just generally how I do things. Obviously, those of you who haven't watched my videos before, that will be new. But there you go. So um, key passes as well. Jake Reeves has been super. Lovridge has been fantastic. I think in one game, uh, Jake Reeves had like nine key passes. I think it was the Birmingham game because we had 18 key passes in that match and tore them limb from limb. Um, just looking at some of the other games, in fact. So, you know, Brighton, we were just never going to get near them, unfortunately. Birmingham, we thumped them. Oxford, we were very, very unlucky to lose that game. Frankly, we were the better side on the night. Shut down every option they had, but they scored from a corner and I just haven't been able to prevent them. And that was literally their only shot in the game, I think, on target. Anyway, Swindon-wise, we should have done better. Once they, once we got 2-0 up, that, we should have won that game. But the, uh, the well, the, the long ranger followed by uh, the late goal, which was bad from us, just really bad getting countered on like that. There was no need for it. I don't know why we were up there like that either. And against Colchester, they were just quite good and it was kind of even to a half time and they just really, they changed something and I couldn't manage to match it. But the point is, we're doing okay in League One. You know, it, for us to be at the point in League One after this sort of point, with the squad that we've got to be doing as well as we are, I'm actually pretty pleased. We have a positive goal difference as well, which is massively important. So I don't think staying up this year is going to be a problem, basically. Now, Doncaster... Um, are actually below us in the league. Not by much, or they certainly were. They're 19th now. They're actually 17th when I last checked. So we could go, they could go above us with a win, but you, you just don't know. So we're going to get into the team selection. The problem is they are playing a very, very, very strange system uh, that I've not come up against since I've been playing this style. We're going to have to get Jake Reeves off. He's not going to be able to start this. Uh, I'm trying to think who we can even play in there. Uh, I'm thinking this might be the sort of day that Tony Harris can... Oh, bloody hell. Go away. This might be the sort of day that Tony Harris needs to start stepping up, basically, and starting in these positions. He's a great player. He's got great stats for this role, but he's not quite competent in it yet. And once he does, that's going to be massive for us. Uh, the one issue that I've got with Tony Harris, um, I don't know why he's got such bad morale either, uh, is the fact, considering that was fine a minute ago, um, is the fact that he won't sign a new contract, probably because of the bad morale. And I don't know how to get that up at the moment. I've tried speaking to him, all sorts of things. The problem is that let's just take a look at the system they're playing okay they've actually gone very narrow which worries me um it didn't look like that on the initial screen and that makes me think that perhaps we might have an issue against doncaster today um now then hmm we may have this one i thought it was raheem sterling then. we may have to edit this one on the fly and see what we can come up with but yeah Tony Harris will not sign a new contract, which is bad because he looks like he's going to be a great player and he's just not ready to play for us in that role yet because he's not got the uh ability to you know, he's not competent in that role. The issue is going to be whether we can... I'm worried about this system, to be honest today. I think if we'd have... If I'd have known that they were going to line up like that, then I'd have probably gone for the narrow system and seen what we could come up with. But we'll, we'll have to edit on the fly and see if we can get the win anyway. But we'll have to see. McCormack now with the ball across and cleared away. That's better. The main area we've been conceding goals from this season is crosses and corners. Almost all of our goals have come from those positions, or conceded goals, rather. Taylor. Oh, back to the edge for Harris. And apparently that's a penalty. Paul Keegan's fouled him. Paul Keegan is one to watch in this game as well. He was the one that was earmarked by my scout, uh, scouts, my scouts or coaches as one to look out for. So it looks like Lyle Taylor's going to step up and take this. If we can give ourselves the lead here after five minutes, it won't really say anything about this game, unfortunately, because it's not really a stat that makes any difference. Taylor smashes it in and it is Wimbledon 1, Doncaster Rovers nil, and that pushes us nicely up the league. And Lyle Taylor grabs himself his sixth goal in six matches and he's missed one as well uh, through international games, which is a pain. But yeah, I may have to sell on Tony Harris in January because if he won't sign a new contract, he'll be gone in the summer anyway. And I hope that if we sold him on even for a small amount in January, we could then get ourselves a massive like 50% of next fee clause or something in there just to make some money off of him. Or maybe even get him back at some point. I don't know. Keegan does well there. We'll probably look long though. And that's key for us. Just there we go. Teixeira, uh, Teixeira actually had 90% pass completion in a game we had lately. And that was good to see. Barcham, that's nice football actually. Harris does well. Shenton. Mm, they're closing down very, very hard. Packing the middle. But we shall see. We'll have to see how well their fullbacks... Their fullbacks are going to be their main source of... Oh, really, Shay? Really? We've been good so far, um, frankly. I've also turned on the stats thing that pops up here and tells you little tidbits about the... Uh, stats of the game, which means that we don't always have to keep looking in the pro zone because it basically is just using the pro zone stats to provide those insights anyway. So it's useful. Uh, Barnsley, who we play next, are absolutely running away with this league. They've won seven out of seven so far and are already seven points clear at the top, which is just insane. Uh, decent pass completion from James Shea. Johnny Burns winning a lot of headers, which is good. James Shea again. Right, let's close down McCormack since they reckon we should. Um, they're committing a few fouls. We've committed plenty ourselves, though. 
this is looking like, right, John Sullivan's winning a few headers, but, hmm, it's been a bit even so far. Nothing's really stood out to me so far as being, like, important to note. Frankham into the box. Can he slip it a through, maybe? He does. Taylor's in there and... Oh, wow. Well, he very nearly didn't put that in, but it is Doncaster nil, Wimbledon 2, and Lyle Taylor has been superb. Raheem Hanley has completed 80% of his passes so far, so he might be one that we can have a little look at, maybe just to close him down a bit more in that second period. John O'Sullivan's also completed all of his tackles, but yeah, so that's important to look at that. It means we don't have to keep looking at the old uh, pro zone at half time and whatnot. I mean, we may take a look at it anyway, but... Um, it just means that we can take a little look here. Nothing really stands out on that one, but we can take a quick gander at the fact they've had two key passes. We've had seven, uh, particularly on this right-hand side. Um, Doncaster have had two on this side from number 58 and number 59. We can quickly take a look at their players. Who are those players? It's McCormack and Martin Smith. So, uh, so what was that all about Hanley then? Let's just take a quick gander here. Hmm. The key passes have not come from Hanley, and he's not exactly completed a lot. He's only had nine passes, to be fair. Uh, McCormack, though, might be one to look at. In fact, it's both of their fullbacks, I think, that are causing the problems. 58 and 59, interesting, is Smith. So McCormack, we might just uh, tackle him a little harder and show him onto his weaker foot. And with Smith, we will just tackle him harder and show him onto his weaker foot. I don't want to close him down because he's a defensive midfielder, so it'll pull players out of positions if we do that. And that's just what I'm going to do for now. Um, frankly, they've not offered a lot for me to really close down, and we've scored two goals. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it so far, but we don't want to let them back into it in the second half like we did against Swindon. So McCormack, now, if this comes back to him, they should come out and try and close it down. That's beautiful from us defensively there, uh, and just really awful from Doncaster. Waiting for the overlap now. Fuller will bomb down this right. He's actually left Frankham for dead there. Frankham covering the space and tight... Wow, Taylor was in for another one there. Win that header. Get in there. Oh, okay. We've got to be careful. Curtis Main is actually winning quite a few of those. Teixeira's pass completion is solid today. Um, at the moment, we're doing okay. No one's really standing out for them so far, but it only takes a second and a really poor back pass or something to really change that. Taylor probably should have had a hat-trick, though. Uh, that was a golden opportunity, but it was more like the old chances that he used to miss because he was too close. Lovridge is in here, and... Loveridge can't quite score, but again, we're looking very, very solid today. The chances have all been ours. If we don't win this, I'll be pretty pissed, to be honest, guys. Um, substitution time soon. Uh-oh. These are little worrying opportunities. When McCormack gets the ball here... Ah, oh, that's beautiful. We're closing him down a bit more, and he's not able to get the crosses in, which is fantastic. So the one area that they were actually getting a bit of success in, we seem to have shut off now. So uh, Andy Butler's only got 70% pass completion. It's not... You know, huge. It's when you start to get towards 80 that I start to worry about them a little bit more. And we've got plenty of players that have got more than that. Frankham. Harris has done a really good job today. Um, admittedly, because he's more a defensive-minded player, it means that he's less likely to get forward, which is useful. Although he's a box-to-box -box midfielder, so you've got to be careful there. Uh, don't get pulled out of position. But also, it means that he's better in the tackle. Although Sullivan's through, and that is 1-2. Damn it. Uh, we've been good enough to get this game to bed still, and I really hope that we don't throw this one away as well, because we've been really good so far. Right, Martin Smith's come off for James Coppinger. Um, Live Tyler is a little bit knackered, but I just want to... Th thinking... Mm, no, he's too knackered. Taylor's had a... Not Taylor. He's had a good game so far. Who else could we maybe get on at this point? Uh, Anthony Ford, maybe, for George Frankham. He's had a decent game, but maybe just a little bit of extra pace down that wing. Hmm... This game is finally balanced right now. We deserve the lead that we've got, but I am worried about these balls over the top. Right, just mop that up. Okay, that was a surprisingly good pass, actually. Oh, there's so much space over the top here. Harris can slip this through. Taylor's got a man out wide. He's going to go alone, I expect. Goes back for Ford. That's a nice play. Can Ford shoot? Oh, and another chance goes begging for us. But these are really tight angles. These chances are not easy to put away. And we're doing well to win this game so far. Bartram's ball in, cleared away. It's going to come back to him, though. And he's just going to leave it because that's a thing, apparently. Right. Oh, Sullivan is getting too much space. That's probably probably right. Taylor, go on, have a shot. Oh, and Burns put it in. There we go. Doncaster 1, Wimbledon 3, Johnny Byrne, his first goal for the club. And that is a should, in theory now, tie up the win. Ten points from our first six matches is perfect, frankly. You carry on that sort of form all season. See, Tony Harris, two key passes. Actually not bad. Uh, right, now Lyle Taylor is going to go off for Aziz, just because... I know Aziz is not particularly great at the moment, but I could do with him getting a bit of match fitness back, and Lyle Taylor needs a rest. We cannot afford to lose Lyle Taylor um, at this point in the season. And it looks like we are going to get away with a 3-1 win here. A little bit disappointed about the goal that we conceded, but we can analyse that later and see what went wrong with that. But there we go. Doncaster 1, Wimbledon 3, and I'm really pleased with that. Superb performance from Taylor again. Two goals and an assist. He is having a lovely time of it this year. And that moves us up into ninth place with a game in hand that winning it could see us go as high as fourth, and that's good. Yeah, defensively we're not fantastic, but we're still going to figure out ways 
ways to plug those gaps. We've got one of the best attacking threats in this league, and that is superb. Next up, though, we've got Barnsley at home. That is going to be massive, because they are probably going to thrash us. And they're Coventry away, so... Could be a bit of both. Interesting to see Preston right down at the bottom there. So that is a surprise. But I'm pretty sure Oxford are doing incredibly well as well. So perhaps losing to them isn't quite such a surprise now. Anyway, next episode. That seems a bit dull. We'll probably do the Brad... Hang on, how many games is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably a bit much. We'll probably do the Berry game, actually. Uh, oh, actually, no. Someone said they wanted me to see me do the Bradford City game as a live comment. It falls reasonably enough. So we'll do that as the next episode. It means you get a bit of a bumper crop of games in the next episode as well. So, guys, um, is there anything else I was supposed to do? Well, actually, yeah. I was supposed to show you guys what leagues I've got turned on, just very quickly on the end. This is what I've got turned on now. We've got England. I um, don't know why they're greyed out, but they are. Um... Oh, of course, because they're above us, so we can't turn them off yet. Um, we've got the France top two divisions, Germany top two, Ireland, Italy's top two, Northern Ireland, uh, Scotland's top two, Spain's top two, and the Welsh first division, a uh, top division, basically. I'll turn on some of the other leagues once we get to a point where we can actually scout them, because for now, it's pointless having them on. It will just slow the game down. So there we go, guys. If you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. If we can get it to 400 for the pretty decent start we've had to League One Life, then please do. That would be fantastic. And uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at 7 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a home game against uh, Bradford City, who currently are sitting, well, mid-table with us. So that could be a, quite an important game. It's a very evenly matched one based on these stats. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.